This is Travis here, Fisher Hex. Appreciate you stopping in. Today's video, I'm going to be answering a subscriber's question, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the question comes from What's a Reef? He asks, Can you make a video about no sump filtration? I can't fit a tank in my cabinet and I don't know what to do. Please help. Okay, the first thing I want to mention is you do not need to have a sump to be successful in this hobby. Got to look at all these all at once the 14 gallon, the 29 gallon bio cubes. They only have a wall separating the front part of the tank from the back. It really is just there to hide the equipment, the return pump, the heater, all that kind of stuff. That's really what that is. But, you know, it doesn't have a sump, and a lot of people have been very successful with bio cubes. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are what are the actual benefits of having a sump in the first place. Now, the main reason why all of us use a sump is to have a place to put our equipment. Having a bigger skimmer, return pump, filters, refugiums probes you know filter socks all that stuff can go in a sump or it's pretty much out of sight not so much out of mind but at least you don't have to look at it hanging on the back of the main display or inside the main display it allows you to pretty much put everything in a centralized location where you uh, you know you can look at it when you want to you can just shut the cabinet door and you can enjoy looking at the main display the next reason is to expand your water volume. Ideally in this hobby, the more water you have, the more stable the system is. Now, it, it is a little bit more forgiving when you have more water. I mean, at the end of the day, you can have a 400 gallon system overdose, you know, a, you know, drop a, a gallon of two part in there on accident, and it will still trash the whole tank. You know, it, you know, at the end of the day, it does help to have more water, but uh, you know, you can still make mistakes and trash the whole tank regardless of how big it is. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are some of the reasons why people don't have a sump in the first place. The main one is buying a system that just doesn't accommodate having one or having the room for one. A lot of people go out and buy these tank and stand combos at like Pestmar or Peco. And uh, yes, they're a great deal, but they're made for fresh water and they don't have the room underneath uh, because the stand is usually made of that uh, ply, not plywood, or that uh, pressure treated board or whatever it is. And uh, they usually have a center brace or two and you just can't fit a tank underneath. So a lot of people buy those systems because they're cheap and uh, you know it's a good starting system but understand you're making sacrifices uh, based on that uh, that whole price point now the next reason why people don't have sumps is they're afraid of drilling the tank I mean it's very common uh, you just bought the system you're new to the hobby the last thing you want to do is start putting holes in the glass when you don't really understand how to do it I recommend doing the research and doing what you need to do to make that happen, either having a friend do it who knows how to drill, having a glass company do it, or doing, like I said, enough research to be able to drill it yourself. So those are the two main reasons why I find that people don't have sumps, and both of them can be worked around and can be avoided if you plan ahead and uh, you know make a different decisions to make those uh, not an issue. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about building a system that doesn't have a sump and building it in a way that you can be successful. The first thing you need to understand is that everything that you're going to add to this tank is going to be on the back glass. So keep that in mind. If you have a 10 gallon tank, the last thing you want to do is add a 25 pound uh, hang on the back skimmer on the back of a tank like that. Just understand that all the weight's going to be on the back glass. So keep that in mind when you're adding equipment. The next thing you need to remember is that when a skimmer cup or something like that overflows on a hang in the back skimmer, all that water is going straight to the floor and 9 out of 10 times is going to follow the power cord. Now what this means is if you don't have drip loops in and around your equipment, you're going to have water going into your outlets, potentially causing a fire. It's a big issue. So make sure you use drip loops on all your equipment that you hang on the back of the tank. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to building a tank for success. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to add enough rock between one to three pounds per gallon, and you want to aquascape it in a way where water can flow around the rock in all directions. This way, you can pick up detritus and make it easier to clean, and you don't have to worry about having those dead spots where cyanobacteria or that uh, detritus can settle and not be able to remove it efficiently. So having enough rock to process waste and having it in a way that it can be easily cleaned around. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is exporting waste from the tank before it has a chance to break down. There are two ways you can do this in an enclosed system. One, adding a skimmer, and two, doing water changes. Now, when it comes to the skimmer, I highly recommend you get something that is rated for double the water volume. If you can get even more, bigger the better. Just remember, you don't want something too, too big hanging on the back of the tank, but getting something reasonable, at least rated for double the amount of water volume for your tank. I also recommend that you skim dry on a hang on a back skimmer as i mentioned before if the cup overflows it's gonna you know get on the floor it, it smells awful and then you know you have the potential of getting it in your light you know your outlets and all that stuff so uh dry uh, dry skimming is not too bad of an idea when it comes to hanging a back skimmer now when it comes to water changes doing your weekly or bi-weekly water changes are key to being successful especially on enclosed systems like this uh, even if you want to do a 15 or 30 percent water change that wouldn't hurt also siphoning out detritus in and around the rock to remove 
remove that excess fish poop and food that you might, uh, you know, either the fish didn't eat or it broke down over time. Uh, removing that stuff before it has a chance to break down to nitrates and phosphates. And then, uh, you know, that we'll move on to that in the next part here. But uh, doing uh, proper water changes on time and also having a big enough skimmer will be key to removing uh, nutrients from the tank. All right, the next thing you want to take into consideration is how you're going to remove nitrates and phosphates from the tank besides doing water changes. Now, one of the things I like to use on these type of systems is the Two Little Fishies Phosphan 150 reactor. Now, for tanks up to about 75 gallons, you can put the GFO and the carbon in one reactor, connect that to a maxi jet, and you'll be able to take care of phosphates that way. You can also modify this reactor to be used as a bio pellet reactor. I've used it on the 125. If you've seen it before, I upgraded. Uh, I use one of those reactors. It works great. So you can add bio pellets or something like that on there to remove uh, nitrates. Uh, if you don't want to do either one of those, uh, continue to do your water changes or bigger water changes. Make sure you monitor how much you're feeding. Don't overstock your tank. Those are all things that take into consideration when it comes to nitrates and phosphate. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is water flow. Uh, it is key to being successful in this hobby. You need to have surface agitation to uh, break up CO2 in the tank, uh, adding oxygen to the tank as well. Uh, you need it to help clean the corals, to move waste around so uh, the skimmer can pick it up. It helps uh, process waste. You know, when water flows through the rock, the rock can process waste better, more efficiently. It's just things like that uh, that water flow aids in. So having enough power heads is always good. I recommend getting something that you can adjust the speed, the different from pulses, wave modes, stuff like that. Obviously, you guys know that I'm a big fan of JBO. Uh, you can do whatever you want, whatever fits in your budget, but having enough water flow is key, and being able to manipulate that water flow any way you want uh, will aid in your success. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is bio load. As with feeding your fish, the amount of fish you have, these are all things that you need to take into consideration when it comes to having a system like this. Now, if you've made sacrifices on the size of your skimmer or you're not using reactors to help export uh, nitrates and phosphates, and uh, you know you're just doing the general uh, water change on a weekly or bi-weekly basis you need to understand that you need to find a way to remove these excess nutrients or you're going to have algae issues so uh, keeping a minimal amount of fish feeding sparingly or every other you know every other day or at least a little bit every day will aid in keeping the nutrient levels down now if you find that you're having algae issues time after time after time it could be because you have too many fish you're feeding too much and uh, if you don't implement another way of removing these nutrients, you're going to battle algae for the whole life of the system. So just keep that stuff in mind. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I hope that I answered that question, at least gave the information that you were looking for. Now, if you guys like these types of videos, feel free to mention it in the comment section below or give this video a thumbs up. If you guys want to see this stuff, I uh, have no problem making these types of videos. Go ahead and put your uh, question in the comment section below or contact me directly. Uh, one thing I want to mention about that, guys, is that sometimes it takes me a day or two to reply to you. Uh, some people are getting butthurt over it, and uh, I tend to ignore that kind of stuff. And, and just understand that there's a lot going on. This channel had 30 subscribers. Uh, a year ago and we're at what 5100 now so the channel is growing quickly I am in the mix of uh, uh, expanding the fish of hex brand for 2017 uh, the 300 gallon build uh, might not be up on the channel right now but I'm in the process of working out deals sponsorships and getting money together to build that tank now that series is going to be a very long uh, series is going to be in depth you guys are going to see every single aspect of that build and there's a lot of attention to detail that you guys don't see um, that will be going into that and, and aiding you guys in being successful so just understand that there's a lot going on so if you're getting butt hurt over me not being able to reply to you quickly um, you're gonna have to suck it up because that's just how life is right now all right so either way if you like the video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for more and I'll see you next time peace